Welcome to From the Bone Vault, coming to you live from below Midnight Lair. I'm Gil. And I'm Levi. And I'm Justin. And I'm and Dan. To- oh, sorry. And we've got a special guest tonight. Yay! Yay! Yay. Dan. Welcome, Dan. Yes. <laughs> I'm Dan. We did a minimal amount of pre-pro here, guys. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We're uh, <laughs> just just strap in. It's going to be fun. Dan, take a quick second and let's, uh, let's introduce you guys. This is Dan Perez. Hi, I'm Dan Perez. Uh, I was, I'm a hypnotist by trade nowadays, and uh, I'm head writer for Midnight Lair, and uh, also the prop guy, and about 15 other things. Um, also, I have a background as a science fiction, nonfiction writer. Uh, I worked for the Sci Fi Channel magazine for years, the editor, and wrote innumerable articles and stuff like that. So I'm a big fan of these kind of films. And uh, so uh, my blood type is a positive. It gives me that <laughs> info. Yeah, for all, for all the vampires that are looking to that's buy That's right. Shit. That's right. I have to tell. I have to let uh, Jackie know about that. So yeah. <laughs> Right, right. And uh, not to sell it short, but Dan is also the voice of Yorick from Midnight Lair. I am. Mm-hmm. So tonight, guys, we have all watched... Uh, we are in many minutes month still, you know, four part series. Uh, second part here is watch. We watched Critters. <gasps> yes, <laughs> 1986. Uh, but you know what? It's not my forte to give some information, so let's do it like we normally do. Levi, hit us with some facts. Well, Gil, like you said, uh, Critters was released in 1986, and a lot of people contend that it was kind of a, a cash grab by the. Uh, by the production company to get some cash after Gremlins came out. But um, in fact, the man who wrote the story, Dominic Muir, claims that it came from a dream he had when he was a kid. And so, um, according to him, uh, this is not a copycat from Gremlins, but they did have to make some rewrites uh, after Gremlins came out because there was some stuff that was a little little too close to that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But anyway, uh, let's jump right into the cast listing right here because there's some really great actors in this movie. Seriously. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Go for it. So first we've got D. Wallace as the mom. And if you're like me, you'd recognize her from E.T. Uh, M. Emmett Walsh, who was a great actor, I guess mainly in like the 80s and the 70s plays Harv, the uh, police well, wait, chief. If, if we're going to say Harv, we have to say it like they did in the film. Harv! <laughs> Harv! <laughs> yeah. He was, he was in Blood Simple. He was, in, he was awesome yeah. in that. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And, it's a great and, movie. And Walsh was yeah. amazing. Um, a surprise, I'm going to jump right to uh, Billy Zane, because it yeah, was fun to see him. In the room, dude. Billy yeah, Zane, the like, Phantom. Yeah. The Phantom. <laughs> yes, Phantoms, yo. He I was the bomb. Believe, I can't believe that's the movie. That's <laughs> yeah. what I have to tell everyone. You remember the guy from Phantom. No, I think of it in oh. my head, I think Billy Zane, the Phantom slash asshole from the Titanic. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. Well, no, there you go. Isn't he no. also in um he's in one of those other movies, it's like a newer horror movie. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. But he like dies in everything. <laughs> no. No, that you think the actually, guy that played uh Oh God! Now I can't think of his name. He it's dies in Titanic. Dead also, he dies yeah. in this movie. No, he. I don't. That's the thing. I don't think he did. I don't think he died in Titanic. He was on the boat at the end, right? Didn't he drown? Didn't he no, push no, some he, people he out lived. of the way? No, and, he lived. Yeah, he yeah. Lived. He was, Rose sees him at the end, and she's like, yeah. "Oh yeah, he's in back yeah. in the he's future." Looking that's for the her. other thing. And yeah, she's that, like, "Hell no!" Critters was his second movie after Back to the Future. Oh wow! I forgot he was in. Oh back. yes, wow, good we call, Dan. Good call, way Dan. Off topic. This is our Billy Zane <laughs> podcast. Yes. <laughs> Before we move on, let's talk about uh, the Brown family, who is sort of the uh, target of the Kreitz as they come down. Yeah. Um, and we haven't mentioned yet. If you haven't seen the movie, go see it. But just in case you haven't, uh, the plot revolves around these little fur balls with teeth called krites that are sort of interstellar eating machines, kind of like uh, the Tasmanian Devil or something. And they crash land on Earth and uh, are chased by a couple of bounty hunters, and they sort of wreak havoc on this uh, small town. Like- so we have the Brown family who are played by uh, Brad and Helen are the parents. Dee Wallace is the mom. Scott Grimes plays the father. 
or was it Brad? Brad was the child. Brad was the, Brad yeah. was the child. I'm sorry. Jay, Jay, Jay was the dad. Billy just, Green Bush was the dad. And just to be yeah. super technical, it's D. Wallace Stone in this, I think. Ah. So. Right. Was that She's was currently D. Wallace listed on. Yeah. Gotcha. But yes, that's gotcha. correct. D. Wallace hmm. Stone in the credits. And we have Scott Grimes playing the son, Brad. And Nadine Van, what was her name? It was Vanderveld? Like crazy, yeah, it was like a really long name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as April, the daughter. And uh, Don Opper, who plays Charlie McFadden, the sort of town drunk. And he also later on plays the, uh, did the other uh, bounty hunter have a name? Uh, I can't uh, remember. The, oh, I don't oh, know if he ever the, had a name. The one, the one that was opposite Ugg? The one that changed all the time? I don't think he, he had, had a name. He couldn't he pick a person? Well, they said it in the film, but I'll be damned if I remember oh. it. Well, like, we'll move on. But uh, Charlie McFadden is basically the character from um, Independence Day, who was yes. like the drunk dad. He was like right. basically that same character, but with no Exactly. Kids. Right. Well, be, there's a connection. Think of the same guy. Maybe, yeah, maybe this is a, a prequel to Could. Independence Day. And then the, <laughs> the, 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 the redhead at the, um, at the police station was also mm-hmm. uh, Janine from Ghostbusters. She lost yep. her job after this. Because the police never <laughs> died. Uh, I think I may have to dispute that. So, no, he's saying this is a prequel oh. to oh, Ghostbusters. Okay. I see. I see. <laughs> so uh, another and another uh, tie that we have to our previous podcast in Gremlins Two, Gil or uh, Justin. Do you know what that is? Oh no! The next you, cast member I'm going to mention. You're going to question me on this, and I'm trying to think who could have been on the other movie. No, that's it. Well, it's a more tenuous connection. The deputy Jeff Barnes was played by Ethan Phillips, who was on Voyager. Oh, Neelix. sad. God, yes. was, was that Neelix? Like, no, oh yes. my Neelix. God! Yeah. Yeah. So He's, we have the Doctor from Voyager. That like, oh, we can't get the Doctor. We have to get Neelix, which is yeah. that's a step down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was um, uh, all banged up too, so it's a little hard to recognize. Him. Yeah. Especially, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, especially when that one bounty hunter copied him as yeah. a corpse. I, I yeah. kind of thought hilarious. that was cool, but like it, it reminded me of uh, this is an old doctor, not even old. This is a Doctor Who episode from years ago where this alien comes to the planet and it copies a bunch of people who had gas masks on who were yeah. injured, and it oh, thinks that that's what yeah. humans are like, and it doesn't know how to repair a human because it's like, oh, they all look like this, and right. it, it, that's immediately what I thought about. I was like, oh, they were like know what he looks I like. think. If we are jumping into what these aliens think about the human species, oh, I got so many things to say about that. Oh, my God. Okay, I got one more cast member I really want to talk about, and then we can move on um, to possibly Dan's forte, which are the special effects. But I want to mention Corey Burton, who was the voice of the Critters, because he is quite a prolific voice actor. He's done all kinds. Yes, he did all kinds of Disney uh Disney voices, including Dale of Chip and Dale, uh, the chipmunk, and mm-hmm. Ludwig von Drake, which I don't know if you guys know who that is, but he's the you old mean duck. Ludwig the- von Drake? Exactly. I knew <laughs> I could count on you, Gil. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, an interesting connection to E.T. besides D. Wallace Stone is uh, Corey Burton did a few ADR leaps, excuse me, ADR loops for E.T., and huh. for the, you comic book nerds out there, he's played Brainiac in quite a few animated incarnations of that character. Was he character. the one that was in like uh, uh, the the Superman animated series and the like? Uh, I believe uh, so. Justice League Unlimited. Oh my god, that's an iconic. I believe voice. so. That's a really good Brainiac voice. And he also, <laughs> interestingly enough, uh, I don't necessarily want to plug myself, but I do. But oh, I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start releasing my own uh, uh, movie review videos, and one of my first movies was flight of the navigator do you guys remember that yes do you remember the ralph unit that sarah jessica parker brings in no he says pardon me coming through oh yeah yeah, okay that is Corey burton the voice of the critters (laughs) the things we find out with the show man this is crazy i know and um one more thing before we move on to the effects they're actually talking about a web series at warner brothers for critters they have a new department for digital web series called blue ribbon content and in january they announced a series so that could be fun We'll see if we'll, we'll depending on how we how we get when we get into the film itself, we'll see how already everybody is. Yeah, with, with the current state of Warner Brothers, I wouldn't trust it too much. <laughs> we'll see. They're also producing a uh, uh, I just went blank static shock uh, live oh, action series. See, I'm which, down for that. 
that could be that's cool. That's going to rule. There was but also- I want to ask Dan, um, do you know who did the special effects in this? And can you tell us something about them? Um, yeah. The, well, a variety of people did the special effects. I mean, they had a pretty full special effects sure. cast, including Joe Viscossel, who uh, was the guy who knew how to blow things up real good. And I'm sure he is responsible for the gigantic explosion of the house at the end. I was going to um, say, he did a good <laughs> job because yes. the explosions in this movie were amazing. So that's probably yes. where they spent most of their money, I was thinking, when I rewatched it. <laughs> Um, and rebuilding it. Of course, the major special effect is, of course, the critters themselves, which were sculpted and created by the Chiodo brothers. Um, and this was really a movie where they kind of cut their teeth. Um, later, they, of course, are extremely well known for making killer clowns from outer space. And they did which all came the, after this, right? Yes, it came after okay. this. And um, and all the, of course, they did all the fantastic clown sculptures and that. I'm also a sculptor, so I'm a big fan of the Chiodos. And... Um, yeah, Dan does amazing work. Yeah, and the and the critters were really cool. They were very unusual. This movie sort of uh, picked up on other critter movies like uh, Gremlins and uh, Ghoulies and stuff like that. But the design was really innovative, and the critters uh, were kind of cute and deadly, which was kind yeah. of a neat combo. There was I liked that. that mouth with all the dozens of teeth and the. Uh, but the kind of those kind of those goofy little grins that they had and everything yeah. like that. And um, they really sort of conveyed one of the major themes in this movie, which was sort of a combination of comedy and horror, because if a critter yeah. latches on to you, it's pretty spectacularly bad. But um, <laughs> but when they're just sitting there going, oh, oh, eh, eh, and you're making their little Corey sounds. Um, right. they're, they're kind of funny and cute. You almost want to pet them except for those spikes that stick out right. of the exactly until you get your hand in there and all of a sudden it's yeah yeah and, and then like gone. the Billy Zane and you're missing some fingers and stuff so um, <laughs> right so yeah but um but they're or your all of your internal organs yeah <laughs> so they used a variety of different uh puppets and effects for them they had just these little fur balls that they just kind of guess shot out of a little air cannon and they would roll along um, and that's the critters in their normal movement mode um, is they just ball up like an armadillo and they just roll. I loved that. That was such a cool. It was very concept. innovative. And mm-hmm. then um, and so and they had, of course, uh, in this one, unlike some of the sequels, so the critters grew larger as they ate. And so at the end, there's this kind of man sized critter running around right. or al- the alpha. Yeah. And he uh, kidnaps the daughter and drags her aboard the spaceship and everything. But um, really, actually, very good effects work on all fronts. Um, the outer space scenes, I'm not sure who handled those exactly, but um, it those, looked great, though. It looked good. Yeah. It looked good. Um, and so, yeah, it was uh, for the time. Uh, the 80s was, of course, <clears throat> excuse me, a great decade for uh, horror movies. And uh, so the effects were good. It's a low budget movie. I think it was I think I've got notes. It was shot for three million or two million. Two and million. It, yeah. And it ended up earning 13 million, I think. So it made yeah. nice. 13.2. Yeah. 13. That's yeah. pretty good for the time. Yeah. yeah. And so and the, I think the special effects are part of that. They're creepy. They're fun. Uh, they're deadly and uh just uh i am going to sculpt a critter one of these days it's on my to-do list awesome. after after i finish all the midnight lair stuff um but uh <laughs> plug, plug yeah plug plug sorry <laughs> anyway it's consuming my life um <laughs> anyway so uh yeah great special effects but i mean people don't normally think about stuff like the pyro effects and stuff which were really good um, there's a scene where a critter swallows kind of a killer firecracker thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that is that is actually the funniest. To me, it's the funniest scene in the movie. It's the first critter death. And the kid throws kind of a cherry bomb. And the critter, like, eats it. And then he's uh, chewing on it. And for a moment, you freak out because it, it goes off and some smoke comes out of his mouth. But he looks okay. And you think, oh, man, he is so going to mess that kid up. And then he just kind of <laughs> wobbles a little bit and he falls over. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. It's. To me, it's like the first big laugh of the movie, and it was just hysterical. It's even better than the famous scene on the porch where uh, the the Krites are talking, and they say they have weapons, and one guy says, "Who cares?" So and they blow them away. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, the, the and, mom shoots them. Yeah, 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 and then we have a little, and then we have a little f bomb there. So yeah, I was about this. Oh man, I was gonna say, and Justin, what does the critic say? <laughs> to that? I don't remember what he said. Like he says, "Fuck this," or I don't remember. <laughs> He but, goes, oh, fuck. Yeah, that's exactly that's one of the, what he says. One of the things that I, I, I kind of like, Dan said that no one cares about the explosions. That was honestly all I cared about because I was like looking at this and I'm like, the 80s have such a weird explosion aesthetic so, to them. 
real yeah. quick, real quick before you launch into that, I want to make sure I get this out there. I saw this movie as a kid. I rented the VHS. I did too. Leave, you did too. Mm-hmm. You saw it as a kid. You saw it as younger. Yeah. Levi, did you see this film originally when we when you were younger? Or was this your first foray? Well. It was really my first full watch, and I couldn't remember if I had seen it a lot, but um, I actually remembered the scene with when Billy Zane got his hand bit when they sort of first appear. So I think I might have seen parts of this movie, but I, I had never seen it in full. So this was my first time knowingly to watch the whole thing. Well, th- I know this one made the rounds on um, M- uh, Monster Vision on TNT. Mm-hmm. It definitely made the rounds on USA Up All Night. Yeah, um, and stuff like that because that's where I remember seeing it after the VHS rental. That's where, that's where I caught it after that. I it's remember awesome. seeing it on um, like DirecTV on the menu. You just see Critters, you know. Critter, it, they would do a Critters marathon where like the, the three movies would be playing back to back. Right, right. And then Dan, you saw, I'm assuming you saw may have saw this in theaters when it came out. Yeah, I think I saw it in the theater, and it was a lot of fun, and uh, that was a great time, you know, because of Gremlins and Ghostbusters and all that yeah. stuff. There was that, that whole three or four year stretch. Yeah, it was, it was just it was really solid, packed with films. Yeah. Um. So, but go ahead, Justin. You were saying you the, when you went back through. You got your 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 watch through of this, and you were you were like the explosions. Yes. The explosions are weird looking. Like they don't look like explosions look today, <laughs> and I like it because I think it's not like a huge explosion most of the time. It's like just kind of debris and sparks and stuff. And um, I don't know how they're doing that or like what what kind of pyrotechnics they use to do it. But it, it it's a kind of cool look that a lot of newer movies, a lot of movies will over will overdo an explosion really. Yeah. And in yeah, the gun they had, the big gun the bounty hunters had, <laughs> was just sort of <laughs> like shooting explosions. It felt like it wasn't even shooting yeah. like an actual projectile. It, it was awesome. It's hard to tell whether they're shooting some kind of laser bolt or actual projectiles, but everything those guns hit explodes. So yeah. it's done. It's yeah. done. And then just the, I got a real Blues Brothers feel from this when they, when they were rolling <laughs> around because they had the cop car. They're beating <laughs> the shit out <laughs> of it. They're, they're real, <laughs> real somber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was giving you background music. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was, and that's how I felt when I was watching this again because it was like, they just kept wrecking into things and here here's the thing that i didn't get when they're in the spaceship and the bounty hunters are, are looking over earth and getting getting the look they're gonna get when the they power land. of the night oh they, there it is there it is the song that they played not once but three not times twice no five separate times wow. that song comes up i don't remember so the other two i don't I don't know what kind of contract the um, the guy that played Ugg, whose name escapes me right this second, um, uh, Terrence Mann had to, to make sure his singing performance was on there. Is but that a man, real man? Got, I don't know. Yes. Ter- 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 Terrence has a, 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 is like a classical Broadway train. He played uh, Rocky. He's done uh, Beauty and the Beast. He's done a ton of things. The guy's actually a great singer. That's him singing. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. they, I don't know if that was an actual band that toured or anything like that, but they put a little throw together band to to do that uh, music video thing that he's in. So yeah, and they missed a golden opportunity. They didn't put that film that that song at the end of the film. They did not end the film with that song. Oh, they did a completely right. separate track. I'm like, I wanted to hear Power of the Night at the end of the movie. <laughs> hey, What's going on? I'll tell you right now that um, Wikipedia lists him as a as an actor, director, singer, and a songwriter. So they he must have some sort of uh, credit for that out there. Oh, he has to. He has yeah. to. And I want to get that song. I want to set that as my ringtone. But he looks like that kick on. He looks like David awesome. Roll to me. He yeah. looks like <laughs> see. I look at him and I see Tim Curry. Yeah, really? me too. Yeah. But then again, he played he played Frankenfurter, so I, I could see Tim Curry. Not, but I, I I don't like yeah. to see Tim Curry, so like that's I try to keep that out. Of, <laughs> I just right. I just think it when I see Tim Curry. So yeah. Oh, we're gonna have so much fun doing a Tim Curry month with you. Then. That would be awesome. <laughs> there is a there is a Critters fan film called Critters Bounty Hunter. And they oh, have really? Power of the Night at the end of it, which is totally nice. crazy. Cool. Yeah. I have to watch that. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, it's a. Did they it's get any of the original and, cast to come back for it at it, all? No, they, no, no. It's just some them? fan film. It's sort of like, uh, you know, this is doing it a disservice, but it's sort of like glorified, uh, glorified cosplay. But they have a bounty. Oh, no. They have a guy in a bounty hunter costume, and they have a critter which looks like one of the critters, and nice. chase, oh, kind of chase him through a house. It's, I it's, have um, to. it's, it's like. It's six minutes long. Well, six and a half minutes long. And you can find I it found, easily. I found numerous fan films like that when we uh, watched Gremlins. Uh, I didn't mention it, but um, those are. Yeah, ki- I, I kind of like those. I like the fan films. Yeah, I mean, people. Yeah, this Bounty Hunter film is fun. 
It's fun you to do, watch. You do them a disservice because, like, fan films, especially in the age of YouTube, a fan film can be really good. Like, yeah. there's a lot of people out there that are producing some almost Hollywood quality fan films. Look at, at the Batman ones. Oh, look the at yeah. the ones for Dead, Deadpool um, musical. Oh, yeah. There's a team yeah. of there's the a Deadpool team of musical? kids that did uh, Nerf fight videos, and they started doing uh, like Harry Potter fights and <laughs> stuff. And those look that their special effects like someone needs to hire those kids. Like it's the, they tear their whole house up, and then it's back together every video. So yeah, in this. oh, you mean tear the house up and then have the house rebuild like at the end of this movie? Oh no, that that was <laughs> that was weird. Like the the radio he gives the kid, he's like, hey, Good call try, me Jesse. sometime. And, yeah. How did that even work? Well, no, my, how did that even when, work? When he was like, call me sometime, I was like, is this dude hitting on this child? Like, this is oh the weirdest God. thing. <laughs> that, that house rebuilding is the That's reverse the power of, the of, of, um, of Poltergeist uh, when the house collapses. Oh, and, at the end? And that, because this movie references a bunch of other movies. And Poltergeist, sure. Poltergeist was 1982, which was before Critters. I and so, think about that. and so the house reassembling itself at the end is sort of the reverse of the poltergeist where it just implodes. That yeah, is cool. That, that vortex just kind of swallows. That was a cool everything. effect as well. It really was. Maybe they just ran it backwards. Yeah, I, I don't know, but um, oh, it was really end. cool. Yeah, how it just what, rebuilt itself. What, what it looked like they did was it looked like they blew up a model when they blew up the mm-hmm. house, but then they also collapsed the house and just ran that well, backwards. Yeah, because then you got live actors there, and that was yeah. all real time footage of that thing coming down. So yeah. that was it was that was well done. But so there are a couple of questions I have, um, not specifically about the critters themselves, because they there? made sense. They, they <laughs> the critters actually made sense to me. They had a, a a way of locomotion that was really cool and genuine. They had the whole spines that had trank darts so they could eat their prey. Yeah, thing. that was cool. All really cool stuff, and it all made sense. I had no questions about that. What I don't understand is, is you look, <laughs> you look at the aliens and like this prison system that they had. Yes. What was up with that? The that opening was of the crazy. My, my biggest problem with the prison system is the movie starts off and it says prison asteroid sector 17. Uh, and then it like there's a pause and you hear like a cell slam noise and it goes maximum security and I'm like well anytime someone's trapped on a fucking asteroid in space that's maximum security you have to fire someone in space it, it, they're pretty yeah. much you don't want them on the planet anymore it doesn't right? get more maximum security than that yeah pretty that's much. an asteroid or, yeah. or another yeah. dimension I think is the only other more maximum security hey they, yeah that's Superman I have, right there. I have another nice little piece of Triver. Uh, critters trivia. Did I say go for it? Trivers trivia. <laughs> trivia. Yeah. Trivers trivia. Tri- so, um, Welcome to the, Trivers Critty, our, our Critters trivia podcast. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> Dan can't speak anymore. Yay! Um, so the warden on the prison asteroid is like Commander. It's Warden Zanti, and mm-hmm. Zanti is, of course, from the classic Outer Limits episode, the Zanti Misfits, which is all about oh. some nasty little ant creatures that get exiled to Earth. And they have a for, they have a zone on Earth that nobody that humans can't go in because they've sort of like, agreed to some sort of weird prisoner exchange. But the little <laughs> but the little horrible ant creatures are called Zanti uh, misfits, and hmm. so that that's was cool. A, that's a little nod to the Zanti because the critters are also kind of like little nasty critters and stuff. Good like that. catch, Dan. Um, I like that. The, <laughs> the makeup on on the warden was was I was impressed. Yeah. Too, I, I, again, I yeah. I had not watched this movie since like. God, I was a very young teenager, so it's like very, bits and parts in my head. So seeing all the makeup effects and everything they did, especially when the uh, the UG, the main bounty hunter, became the actor that played him, and you saw that cool that, liquidation. Yeah, scene. that was really cool. That was from Raiders of the Lost. Yeah, Star, that was like Raiders. They, they can only do it once this movie, though. Yeah, Ra- Raiders <laughs> was 1981, which was before uh-huh. Trip Critters. And they use that. Great, though. They would take a gelatin or a wax head, and then they would blow hot air on it. It would melt, and then they'd film it in reverse, and that's how they got the aliens Sweet. to sort of reconstitute it, themselves. It also it looks like um, like it's weird to see a movie make so many references like this. Like you know, we have movies that reference other movies here today. Like we have like those you know meet the spartans type like terrible things like that but they're so <laughs> they're so obtuse and like over the top with it whereas this is a much subtler oh did you get this if you didn't it's still enjoyable but it's right. it's, it's well, a, wink, a, lot a wink and a nudge and it can stand on its nudge. own those those movies rely on you seeing those other movies 
to oh, yeah. be entertaining. But something yeah. like Critters, uh, like Dan has been saying, it just sort of takes little bits and pieces yeah. and is sort of paying homage to those other films. I, I and, think that's right. a big difference. And when you say the and word entertained, I'm, I'm thinking entertained is probably too strong a word to describe Meet the Spartans. Uh, but <laughs> I think you are correct. <laughs> but um, oh, there's man. lots of nods to E.T. Obviously, the big connection yeah. there the is, doll. is D. Wallace. The doll, the doll. specifically. Yeah. Yeah, he goes, that's who a, are you? That's <laughs> another funny scene because the Crite thinks it's an actual alien. And that's, yeah. that's it, it's a clever little which, bit. But Which baffles there's, me because there's, like, they, they get on a ship. They steal a ship and they can fly inter- interstellar and they walk around and they have conversations. But then he can't tell that a doll well, it, what well uh, to me it means that like he must know et style aliens and i mean honestly them getting on a ship and flying it isn't any different than someone stealing a car wasn't there a whole then does that mean this is the earth that's part of the star wars universe i was gonna say yeah yeah because yeah, they have but, the I was thinking. but all that happened a long time ago in a galaxy far far away <laughs> uh, uh, maybe the et's moved to this galaxy later. yeah you win the other uh scene that really recalls um E.T. is, of course, the first time we see a critter. It's nestled. It's nestled in a bunch of uh, stuffed animals. Like, oh, yeah. Like E.T. is in E.T. Yeah. And so, yeah. That was cool. This also <laughs> had... Oh, I'm sorry. This also had, like, um, D. Wallace Stone in her prime. I mean, just screaming, crying, being a great mom, all the stuff that she does. <laughs> she was chewing Cena yeah. up in this movie. It was really good. I got to tell you, especially uh, being cast next to the guy that played um, the dad, uh, Billy Green Bush. He, I felt like his performance wasn't bad. It's just it was very bland and very matter of fact. And I think he was going for just this this salts of the earth farmer act with it. But like it was very basic compared to the mom just freaking the fuck out. You know, out. though, I, I kind of liked that. Um because I, I felt like this family, by and large, reacted like real people would. Yes. And they tried to be smart about how they um, how they dealt with these critters. Whereas yeah. so, uh, horror movies have it. And this is one reason I got turned off on horror movies when I was younger um, was a lot of times the people are just stupid and they do things. You know, the, the cliches like running up the stairs when someone chases you and, you know, walking into a, a, a dark room and not knowing what's in there. You know, even movies like Prometheus where oh I'm a scientist but I'm gonna touch all this weird crap that I've never seen before that looks like a snake touch yeah. a lot of stuff and, yeah, yeah <laughs> or or I'm, or I'm an archaeologist and I see a petrified uh, disembodied head and I'm gonna run off into the caves because I'm terribly frightened like an idiot. right <laughs> well, well like the I Let's, think the other thing is that that is drugs for like half the movie like actually shot. that's true he's well I think he's in a lot of pain um, because. The, I, he got he got messed he up. got messed up. He's a he's the one living person that got the most messed up by the critters. But those darts the critters shoot are sort of like time release knockout things because when the daughter gets shot in the neck and also the mom when they yeah. pull the spike out they revive almost instantaneously. Yeah. Right. So right. I think right. and, uh, Justin, I think, his I think, arm think you was were going numb, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, but it's uh, but, but it's sort of it's not consistent. But Justin's right. Um, the dad was pretty effed up. Well, no, that, you so. have to understand. Also, the mom and daughter get shot in the neck, where you'd want to put a trank dart on someone. Right. The dad gets shot in like the leg, so he pulls it out immediately. Yeah. I think he just got the toxin in his system, and he's kind of slowed down because you yeah. see, like he starts to speed back up as they get further from that scene. Yeah. It's right, actually yeah. really well acted. Right, yeah. I agree. And by the time that Brad sort of goes off on his own, it seems like the dad is is more lucid and is like, okay, son, you know, do what you need to do. And I think you're right. Yeah. yeah He's Levi's, also lost a lot of blood. Yeah, Levi's really, <laughs> yeah. Levi's really spot on about the way this family operates. They're not your stupid horror movie family. Um, not at all. They, not at all. The, when they're all trapped on the porch and they don't have the key, the kid like runs around to the back, climbs up a tree, comes down, yeah. lets them in at the last second. So this family reacts extremely and, realistically. And, and not yeah, only that, really the good. script writing is smart because earlier in the movie, he catches the kid in the tree and says, yeah. you must have done this a lot. And he's like, yeah, mm-hmm. a few times. So they're yeah. letting you know, OK, if this kid climbed the tree fast later on, it's not just some fluke accident. He can actually climb the tree fast. Right. Right. Unlike the critter that just runs directly into the tree, yeah, like, <laughs> or the critter that's like keep banging on the on the uh, on the freaking gate outside instead of hopping it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, one of them just pops through the gate, like like you know, here's Johnny. Like, 
threw it. Yeah, yeah just completely <laughs> threw it. Well, one thing uh, that would bother me though about this is like they did a little bit of Chekhov's gun and it didn't get a payoff because you never see him go get the, the slingshot. Uh, slingshot. I was totally. Oh it. my god, it made me so oh, mad. Good point. That might have been yeah. just. I was waiting for him to get some of the smaller firecrackers and fire them off at something to cause a distraction. That would have been again not not a big ta- not well, a big loss. Honestly, yeah. expected. It's a very missed opportunity because he the dad goes to give him the shotgun. He's like, he'll slow me down. And when he walked over to yeah. the cabinet, I thought he was going to get the slingshot out because he saw where the dad put it. They just kind of ignore it. And like, exactly. I was like, man, they could have used that slingshot for something. I and wonder had, like, if they had that, but they had to cut it out. Or yeah, something. that's I just, I was literally yeah. about to say, we're going to get emailed. <laughs> we're going to get messages about this from people. So like, ah, but there was a deleted scene. And <laughs> yeah. I, I guarantee it. They just lost the prop while shooting. And so they couldn't use it. <laughs> like, oh, crap, we can't find it. Let's, let's move on. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's just write, it. let's write that out. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> there, there's been some props lost and things I've seen, but they just didn't use that prop for the for the episode or movie or whatever <laughs> nice that's yeah. hilarious we let, we let steve carell on set and he freaking broke it <laughs> <laughs> so well, can i talk about one of my favorite moments in the movie yes oh please, please, please do. Do. when the uh when the uh bounty hunters crash in front of the church and this like goofy fire and brimstone preacher they walk in and the look that the organist gives them when he changes his face into the the preacher's face <laughs> like let's see i had her name the organist was montrose hagens montrose hagens did an excellent job kind of mugging to the camera when that happened and so i think she said a, something let's give right? a round of applause for the for the cast man the the, yeah. the cartilage of this film the the secondary cast was amazing in <laughs> yeah, this movie all the true. townspeople yeah yes they were really good and even the the kind of the pool room thugs and everything, they're going to yeah. mix, mix it up with the uh, bounty hunters. The they, they're, they're, kind of, they're kind of they're kind of believable. They're not just stock right. idiots or whatever. And then and when, like I get oh go ahead no yeah, no sorry that, that, that was pretty much it. I was just going to say like obviously these pool hall toughs don't watch movies because you never walk up to the strangely dressed man and call him funny names that never ends well. I yeah. mean uh, you know. In Terminator, in any movie. No, not at all. The one bounty hunter is very large, too. He's not like a small guy. He's very tall. Yeah. And Johnny um, Steele. Yeah, I, I did <laughs> him right. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm literally. No, you're oh, absolutely I, right. I'm yeah. laughing because of the na- guy's name. I love well, that. Yeah. Name. I, I did. Steel? I did want to say though, like, because like we we kind of skipped over. It. We we, we mm-hmm. spoke about him, but we didn't mention it much. Billy Zane. Like, I was expecting to get some, like, long-term Billy Zane action. Yeah. Like, oh, Billy Zane's the boyfriend. He's going to be here the whole time. He's got a ponytail oh, and he, an yeah. earring. He has so a cool. curly ponytail, which is an odd choice. And then, you know. <laughs> and his license plate. Did you catch his license plate? No, what did plate? it say? Two Gur eight with a GR eight. Oh Dude. no! And, and then number two. No. Yeah. Well, I'm glad they bit his fingers off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that was, was the cool. longest make out in that, of so course, history. is the famous movie trope of death by sex, where the yes, two teenagers yep. are having sex, and then the monster mm-hmm. comes yeah, the first and ones. eats at least mm-hmm. one of them. And that's it, that has just been used overused in way too many movies. But you know, yeah. it's forgivable because so much else in Critters is awesome, and it's like so. the basis of everything that happens on Buffy. That's and no bad. one, yeah. no one actually right. had sex though. They were just making out for like forty minutes in a barn. Why everybody that's, was yeah. screaming. That's the rating. Yeah, that's all it took. Well, I mean, yeah. the rate. That, that was. I was going to ask that too. The rating in the movie, like they're they're saying fucking in caption, and then they're also like, I, I was like, is it rated R? Is it not? Like, I don't know what happened back then with this movie. I assume this was an R rating for the time that it was released, but I don't have anything <laughs> to back it. But I just pulling off memory. I don't remember anybody else dropping any F-bombs. Well, see, why I asked one that is one. because in theaters they could have easily just replaced that captioning. And w- for true. a wide release, they could recast in it. You didn't recast yeah, in anything. It was PG thirteen. Yeah, so. they yeah. probably replaced well, the wait, captioning. Did you? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take a step out of this Uh-oh. film for half a second. Did you guys happen to sit down and watch any of the other ones? No, no, I tried to, but I didn't have time. You I really mean, wanted uh, to. You mean like with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah. Wait a minute! Yeah. Now I, I have that. to watch the other ones. I know the third film. Yeah. I read that. Well, absolutely watch them in order because the second film, the first film had 
no nudity that I can remember. No boobs. There's no nudity. Zero. I would have remembered nudity. The second film within the first, I think, 20, 25 minutes of the film, you have a fully nude woman playing the secondary (laughs) bounty hunter. The the other bounty hunter from this gets to Earth and he still hasn't got it. A playboy falls open on the ground. Uh, He copies it. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. It's a centerfold and has a staple across her midsection. Oh, my God. He copies the damn staple. Yeah. That's hilarious. That is a really funny guy. I thought you were going to tell us there was like DiCaprio dick somewhere. I was like, whoa. (laughs) (laughs) No. Oh, he's so young in this Oh, wait, is, is, wait, wait. Is it like what's it in Gilbert Grape DiCaprio? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. no. It is young DiCaprio. This, in the third this is not, the worst uh, DiCaprio. This is not Critter's uh, child porn edition, so. <laughs> Critter's yeah. CP. Yeah. <laughs> do, but there do, was a, there was a so, man in this movie I'm with a shirt that said Honey right Boy. Now, so. Oh, stop. <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> kidding. Search Critter. Was that so, Levi? There was a guy. There was a guy that what? There was there was a guy wearing a shiny orange shirt that said Honey Boy on the back. Yeah, what was that all about? Yeah, it was his bowling that. name, man. It well, was in the, the bowling alley. I like the bowling shirt. Shiny orange shirt. The bowling shirts were like a Ghostbusters. The yeah, the pin busters. That was amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we haven't even mentioned cool. the daughter yet. What was her name? Um, Sarah. April. April. April, April yep. was like. April was a very tan teenager. I was just like played by Nadine, Nadine whatever uh, Van- Vandervelt. Nadine Vandervelt. Yeah, yeah. Vandervelt. Mm-hmm. Vandervelt. She was. I gotta give it to her though. She was. Um. She was a typical. She was kind of a stereotypical teenager, reacting to things, chasing her bratty brother around, dressed like an '80s uh, gal. Other than the like legit pearls she's wearing at the beginning of the film. And that sundress. That, yeah, it was a little weird. That was weird. <laughs> um, but then the rest of the film, she's in typical '80s fashion. You know, the the, the um, acid wash. Oh my jeans. god, the work, the, yeah, or the workout pants with the tennis shoes with the socks. Yeah. Uh, the side ponytail, that kind of stuff. Um, again, great acting, great reactions to stuff. But like, I was surprised that how, when I was watching the film, I'm like, she is genuinely a beautiful actress. Oh yeah, she's really pretty. She is strikingly pretty in this movie. And they, they framed her very well. They The lighting was done really well on her. I, I didn't expect that. You know, the 80s I mean, likes really was... tan women too. Like, yeah. I, mean, I think <laughs> yeah. Phoebe Cates is the same way. She's very like, just healthily tan. Not that scary like burnt tan, but like <laughs> and, the, and the mom too. The mom is actually really attractive. I don't know how old she well, was at this point. The daughter had that uh, framed picture of George Hamilton on her desk. And her, didn't um, see that. I'm kidding. <laughs> no. Oh, I was about uh, to I'm say. Kidding. I was about to lose the king, of the, the king of the tan guys. What was the poster <laughs> in the background in the kids' room? I remember saw I saw a poster. Uh, that was the Thompson Twins. No, yeah. no, 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 no. There's, there was another band back there that was. Just, I, yeah, I watched it, and I was trying to catch what that no, poster I, I was. I read I what it was, but I oh, just okay. can't remember anymore. I can't remember a, it either. It was a band yeah. that you wouldn't have expected to be. Oh, it was um, not Genesis. Was it Genesis? No. It was the other band, like the police. The lamer Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> the lamer. Oh, shit. No, I'm about to say, if this kid was a uh, Phil Collins fan, it would that would not surprise me. So, wait, wait, wait. Let's Hold on. Another trope of 80s films. What's with the f- little freaking arsonist? He did you see the bench he had? Oh uh, yeah, different things he had. It wasn't just like, hey, I've got a couple of yeah, caps, this is or, this or, is or things. He, he had, was an like, explosives expert. Yeah, he's, like, <laughs> he's uh, an EOD expert. He's like, he's like little junior <laughs> no, unibomber. That freaking pipe bomb he so. threw on the the ship at the end. Yeah. Seriously, like I was shocked at all. Yeah. I'm like, what was his dad when his dad came in and says, "You got to be careful about this dangerous stuff, son. You could hurt somebody." Do you see that? He takes the slingshot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> takes the slingshot, leaves all the bombs there. His little, Dude, his little, bo- the bench. his little bomb factory's okay, but hey, son, you're gonna hurt somebody with that slingshot. Yeah, so. every every kid in the '80s was Bart Simpson, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> so, but he saves the day. He blows up the ship after well, the him ship, and the drunk, him and the after drunk the ship friend. destroys their farm. Those jerks. Yeah. Actually, so the ship the, the ship destroys the farm after they throw the stuff in it. Like they fly by just as like a, out of spite, they just shoot their <laughs> yeah. house. They keep. I'm like, what well, the hell? Listen, listen to the ADR <laughs> track of them just laughing yeah. their ass off. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much ADR in this movie. There's yeah. a part where um, someone's walking off and they're talking. I want to say it's the bounty hunter is walking off and the drunk oh, is following yeah. him and it's super ADR like he's just like his voice is like ultra clear and like I'm in a sound booth and then they're just like in a field yeah, walking yeah and you can't and they didn't really fully in any like 
foliage no. rustling. They could have like, put like some that, terrible so. cricket sounds over it or something. It was yeah. perfect because it was it was total eighties. Right? It was. Yeah. It That's was what really I love about this 80s. film. You can't you can't you can't step away from the just sheer good feeling you get from sitting and watching this film. If you're a fan of eighties films at all, just the the way it was shot, the uh, I don't know. I guess the film quality is the only the only term I have because I, again, I'm, I I don't know the the technical aspect. But this it drips of eighties film. It really yeah. is, and also this movie holds up really well. There are it horror does. movies I that agree. Um, you watch, and even some aspects of Gremlins are a little, eh, you know, with time. Mm-hmm. But um, this movie holds up really well. It's got all the little, you know, the little expected tropes. The small town, which is named Grover's Bend, and which is a which is a nod towards Grover's Mill, where the Martians landed. Uh, with Orson, oh. with yeah, Orson Welles and all that. I know. Um, I, I was doing my trivia homework today, guys, and Good um, job. and so um, so it's got all the little tropes of the little farm community and the little farmhouse besieged by the monsters and stuff like that. But they did it really, really well, and it it does hold up. It's quite a fun film still to watch because I I just watched it today to refresh. And I mean, you weren't here for Gremlins too, but Gremlins two is a dumpster fire it's a and masterpiece like, it's a masterpiece seeing, of, seeing uh, this after going to satire like it's a this is a of much satire. better put together like first off this is actually a movie Gremlins yes. 2 is not a movie it is some sort of variety show featuring little puppet monsters exactly and the, That's why the, I love the it. effects are better in Gremlins 2 for sure like the effects look better yes. but it's also 91 and yeah. so this early and, on like and, everything but the puppetry actually looks really good in this movie. Yes, like, honestly, the yes. but I even think I even think there's some scenes, there's some specific scenes that are shot in this film that you kind of lose that the critters feel like puppets. They yes. feel like real creatures right. in, in the way that some of this movie is lit. Yes, I have to agree. Mm-hmm. Well, they and also, also they don't move ever. That helps a lot. They're right. only shot out of that mm-hmm. ball, and that ball yeah. thing helps them keep that. They're right. moving of the ball because when you see a gremlin walk, every bit of yeah. mystique drops. It yeah. looks bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 idea of them rolling into little balls was brilliant because it allowed them to move around fast and efficiently, mm-hmm. and it was un- it, it was unusual, and so it was really yeah. really nice. Oh, you know what? I just thought of something, guys. What, do you think this film was the first one to have that camera following the vision of the monster thing, or do we think it was? Even oh no, bad? no, no! no this movie's no, been no. before. Yeah. I've seen it in the Creeping Terror, which is like a black and white movie that's yes. god awful. Yes, and he's, it's a mystery science right. theater movie. Do not ever watch well, hell, it. Yeah. No, let's write no, that down. No, it's let's so bad they, the they couldn't make fun of it. <laughs> like but actually, you, really? you will fall asleep. That's oh, you just that's go ahead. Dave. Oh yeah, I was gonna say Justin set me off. Um, so the creeping terror uh, when you watch the movie, I, Justin's completely right about that uh, monster cam thing and that. But when you watch the movie, the monster's head dips up and down constantly. <laughs> so if when it's when it's when it's like a distant shot, and so if it was really truly, uh, let's call it Justin Vision, um, if it was monster really cam. truly that. The, then the, ca- the camera would be bobbing up and down <laughs> and it would be really hysterical and that would have made it so much better oh there, there's a British show yeah. called uh, Peep Show where every camera angle is shot from a point yes, of view of a yes, character that's right. and it makes the show so hard to shoot because there's never any wide shots it's all right in people's faces yeah. if someone kisses someone else they're basically kissing the camera and it's so <laughs> awkward to watch so I can't imagine if there was like a monster view because Predator has that too Predator has the, the yeah yeah. The Predator Monster. A lot of movies were doing that, but it was mm-hmm. not... It's not well done, particularly, I don't think, until Predator. Predator is probably the first thing to do it in an interesting way. I don't know. I mean, I really like... I, I, I kind of liked it in this film. I think you got... Oh, no, I liked real, it. I liked a it. Real, I think it gave the film a really cool sense of motion and a sense of terror from the characters because you're, it, it, you you get a reaction from them hauling ass away from mm-hmm. these things and a sense of speed. You know, you can see them bouncing around, but until you see the speed at which that camera is chasing the person and they're like, holy crap, and they're running, you get a little more sense of terror. Now, again, 
I wasn't very scared of this film because, again, it's an 80s horror film. Because you're a grown it's man. Puppets. Yeah. And a grown ass <laughs> man. Um, but I could see where people at the time potentially could have gotten a laugh yeah. mm-hmm. and a little bit of a scare from this. There's definitely some yeah. jump scare ish moments. Oh, yeah. That, a lot of the early stuff is jump scares and stuff like that. Which is, But the thing, down the the thing about um, Critters that, are, that really endears it to me is they have a lot of typical horror movie tropes we talked about this family being smart which was awesome but um but it's got a lot of regular horror movie tropes but it's so endearing that you just don't care that they're there they they work they roll the movie along and uh but about that rolling thing i just think it's hysterical when they roll up and they bump into the 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 fence and it adds i mean because that's an awesome way for them to locomote but it also indicates that it's not you know, necessarily the best way they can get out of danger really fast. It's but not they, precision. But it's not yeah. precision. Right? So they go boom and a little cloud of dust comes <laughs> yeah. through the pickets. That, that was my second biggest laugh when I rewatched it tonight. So it was really good. Oh man. That's just, this is great. This is just, I gotta say, so let, let's just bring it to that thing guys. Cause I think we're, uh, we're getting a little closer. Yeah, we're getting close. Um, <clears throat> I, overall excellent film. Mm-hmm. I think it, execution was well done. Um, I, I personally, I would give it top marks as one of my favorite '80s films, and it's one of the main reasons I suggested uh, we do it for the show. Levi, yeah, I agree. Uh, like I said before, this is my first time to see the thing in in its full glory, and I, like Dan said, it's. Uh, I think it had a lot of heart that uh, some you know uh, critter or monster movies especially in the 80s didn't have and it endears you to that family in a way that other movies try but um, and the townspeople even they have little quirks and they say little off lines and it makes you feel like this is an actual community and it's not just a bunch of stereotypes running around and as you guys were alluding to earlier I think the the film craft on this movie for lack of a better term was very good for what it was. And um, there was one great transition I wanted to point out where uh, they show the deputy when he first gets killed and he's being pulled under his cop car and they cut to D Wallace stone throwing something yeah. into the, uh, the garbage disposal yeah. in the sink. Yeah. And <laughs> so there's like little touches like that, that um, really make this movie fun to watch from a you know film creation standpoint or you know me someone who just enjoys watching movies and and seeing those things it it was a great movie and i had a lot of fun and like i said it has a lot of heart so uh how about you justin um i actually enjoyed this movie a lot more than the last movie like i said and i think that to, <laughs> more to levi's point um the the script writing and a lot of the effects and stuff were just really well done and cared for. Like, someone actually really cared about what they were doing. They really tried. Uh, like I said, the script writing pays attention and it's smart. It tries to leave you hints before. Uh, that's probably why I thought the slingshot thing was going somewhere, because we, we'd seen so many other payoffs. Um, I like to even say this back, back to Billy Zane, because I'm just obsessed with Billy Zane. Um, <laughs> You know, when when they made the decision not to kill anybody in the family, they had to introduce Billy Zane early on. So it's like you get a sense of danger from these creatures. They're not just bumbling and unable to kill anybody. But at the same time, they never actually get any of the main characters in the movie. And so I'll, I'd say that this is this is probably one of the movies that from the early 80s or not really early, late 80s that holds up. Um, a lot better than a lot of things that held up in the, even the 90s or late 90s. Agreed. Well said. Dan, any final thoughts? Sure. Um, the For me, um, the test of a movie that tries to combine horror and comedy is, does it do it seamlessly and effectively? There are movies where it's a little bit disjointed. Um, I know I'm going to hear about this, but um, An American Werewolf in London is a great movie. But the, but the comedy and the horror are seem a little off off just to me in terms of the com- the combination great movie don't get me wrong i love it but this movie seamlessly combines comedy and horror and just rolls along and does it in a way that as uh, justin said a lot of other movies do not 
it feels like the comedy is forced in those movies and it does not feel forced here. It just kind of catches you by surprise. And then the critters like ripping somebody's neck off and then, you know, they bump into a fence and there's little puffs of dust or, or a gremlin bites down on a firecracker and keels over. So there's just <laughs> lots of, it's a really nice synthesis of, of scary stuff and comedy that I think works extremely well. And I do agree that of, of the many great movie, horror movies and monster movies that were in the eighties, this really stands up uh, for a $3 million movie. It really stands up very strongly for what it is. And I just love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Dan, we can't thank you enough for being on the show tonight. We really appreciate yes, it. Dan, and, thank uh, you. Ho- yes. Thank- hopefully we're going to have you back. Yes. Thank you for um, having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, anytime. I think we, uh, where well, there may be some considerations, don't don't keep the, don't uh, take this as a carved in stone. But I think American Werewolf in London. If we have you on again, we may have you for that. Yeah, I'm, about I'm, it. I'm that down. Could be a lot of fun. I'm down. So yeah, another great effects movie. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, guys, I think we put the final nail in this coffin. Um, Levi, Justin, what are we watching next week? I think it's another another movie in the uh, uh, Mini Menace month. Don't ask me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to tackle ghoulies. Go yes. right into the toilet. That's right. We did do uh, this before. Right into the commode. Right into the commode. <laughs> That's where we're headed. <laughs> well, for show notes and other oddities, visit our podcast page at from the bone vault at uh, dot podbean dot com. That's from the bone vault dot podbean dot com. For email, Levi? Well, you can catch us at from the bone vault at gmail.com. And we've also got a YouTube channel where we're putting up. We have the whole first season of uh, from the bone vault on there. It's called Midnight Lair. That's the name of our YouTube channel and also the name of our television show that we're currently in production that Dan is the head writer for. So you can go to YouTube to check that out or give us an email. Let us know what you think. Yes, please chime in. Uh, Dan, real quick before we let you go, is there anything you'd like to plug for the show? Um, for uh, No, just uh, I'm very excited to be working on Midnight Lair and uh, very busy doing the props and the set stuff for that right now. It is consuming my life in a good way. Um, and uh, we've got... Uh, just a quick update. We've got all we've got in the entire first season written and in the mm-hmm. in the can. So uh, very excited about production, and I'm hoping we're going to be doing that in a month or so. And yes. um, you know, if anybody wants to be hypnotized, look me up at uh, just look me up on Yelp. Just uh, it's hypnosis works with an exclamation point, and uh, I'll take you down. I'll hypnotize you to think uh, Gremlins Twos is like super good. It worked for me. It worked for me. Justin, Justin's going to be my first customer. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, I'm fine where I am. <laughs> well, guys, from the Bone Vaults, this is Gil. This is Levi. And this is Justin. And Dan. Good night. And, st- <laughs> and stay scary, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.